803 Route 30, Amsterdam, New York. Okay. And um, people can drop in if I'm available, I will see them. There's another office in Fulton County in the Planned Parenthood building. Um, and it's very nice for us to be there because sometimes uh, when people come in for services, it triggers a memory, triggers something, and we're right there to address that. Yeah, and the, uh, the hotline, uh, 1-866-307-4086. Correct. That's and right. that is uh, 24 hours a day? Yes, yes. Uh, anytime anybody wants to call that, they can go ahead and do so. Uh, also, services are available 24 hours a day. And the website, www.plannedparenthood.org slash PPMH. That's right. Uh, for those uh, that want to go on the web and uh, learn more about the program. I so. wanted to talk a little bit more about the education programs that we all do. Prevention, prevention education is very, very important with, um, with, with any kind of service. We're willing to tailor trainings for anyone in the community, 4-H um, leaders, um, daycare programs, schools. We have some wonderful uh, programs that we offer. One of my favorites is Safe Dates to do at the schools. You know, and, and it's learning about respect and res respecting each other. Um, if someone is interested in a program, they can call our hotline ask for me and I will help set up a program. There's no charge for any of our services and I really like to be able to say that. Okay. Uh, that's something else people are concerned about. Counseling can be very, very expensive. But Rape Crisis doesn't charge anyone who comes in. And we really enjoy doing the community education programs and the trainings. And the more, I feel like the more we can do, the less problem we'll have with assaults. Yeah, and for, and for volunteers, uh, they can, can volunteers sort of figure out what they want to do in the program? Uh, they, you know, if they want to do it in a specific area, uh, can they choose where they're going to do their volunteer work? Uh, whatever county that person is in, they can volunteer in that county. And uh, with our volunteers also, we have volunteers to answer the hotline and work with clients, but they're welcome to do education programs with us, uh, public speaking in the community, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of tabling events to get information out. Yeah. So there are some different opportunities for them. Uh, one of the things with volunteering is that you don't know when you're going to get a call. You know, you're, you're on call, and some of the volunteers said, I haven't had anything happen yet. And one of our volunteers got two calls in the same night, and that was her first right. experience. She handled it well. And like you said earlier, we don't, you don't know when and where yeah. people are going to uh, call for that support. Um, you also mentioned uh, a, few other organi uh, a few other events coming up well, that we, we want have, to talk um, about. We have a sexual assault response team in Montgomery County. and. Um, on that team, St. Mary's Hospital uh, staff, ER emergency room staff, uh, law, all the law enforcement agencies are represented, Child Protective Services, domestic violence, um, CASA, the court appointed attorneys for children. And uh, we meet every other month. And they've been great meetings because we sit at the table and talk about our services. and. And that makes everyone more aware. Even though we know we're out there, sometimes you forget that you know you could refer someone to this place or, or this person offers this. And what we've started doing too is um, case discussions, and those are closed and confidential, to help people get the services that they need. It, uh, we fall short sometimes. We can advertise, but people don't look far enough. Um, someone might have a child that needs counseling um, and not know where to go, so we can help them find find what they need. And one of the things that we've been doing with our SART team, our sexual assault response team, is an April event. Uh, last year was great. We had our event at St. Mary's Hospital, uh, the Route 30 campus, and they had the this, this seniors here, the Wilkinson Center, and they came to this event. Um, it was a Pinwheels for Prevention Day. Law enforcement did some programs. They had you know, their dogs come, showed what the dogs can do. The Hageman Volunteer Fire Department brought their safety trailer so the children can go in that. But the seniors really enjoyed doing this. So we're planning to do that again. But we went to grow this. The first, first couple times we did events, we kept them smaller so we could handle them. And we want to see them, we, we just want to see them grow, want people to come. 
And this is a community event. Anybody can go. A community event. Yeah. And we're hoping uh, this year we want to invite more vendors uh, from the community to get information out. And um, we're even thinking of providing transportation for families so they can get to this event because Wonderful. that's difficult sometimes. Um, we're also doing, uh, the community mobilization is part of what I'm doing as a coordinator. And again, that's educating. And uh, we're reaching out into the community. I'm working with, with other agencies in the community. I work closely with domestic violence, work with law enforcement. And we want to do a call to men and start um, getting men involved. It's, it's, everything starts at home. You know, helping people talk to their children about respect for women, uh, eliminating violence against women. And you know, I'm not saying that people are all bad, but but our behaviors and actions and things we say can affect other people. Um, we're working, we're, we're still, this is still in the planning stages, but we're getting feedback from community agencies and we want to have some open meetings, brainstorming meetings with, with people in the community. And we're thinking of going out to them, going out to sporting events and just getting people together and talk about how can we do this? How can you help us? What can you do with us? And uh, certainly the outreach uh, helps people get involved. And, sure. uh, so and people, people know we're there and know and what we're doing. The awareness, uh, with, as with any issue, the awareness is very important so that people know uh, this is something affecting our communities, like you said. Well, you know, there's so much about bullying, and bullying does happen, bullying does go on. And, um, <clears throat> you know, teaching, teaching people um, to not bully starts with, well, starts with bystander intervention. When should you step in? How can you step in? And this is something that we need to teach children and adults. I think that's very, very important. You know, we all see things that aren't comfortable for us, but then it's, it's that question of, what do I do with this? What do I do about this? Where do I go with this? Right, right. So it's, it's exciting. Um, we want to involve all the schools. And Montgomery County is a big county. We have a lot of schools. Yeah. We have a lot of people. Yeah, and I, I visited St. Mary's uh, a few times in some of the schools. Yes, it's very... Uh, it's, and it's spread out. We have it's our, spread out, yes. our western part of the county. Uh, it's difficult to get the... The western part of the county has three law enforcement agencies. And they can't leave to come to meetings. But we're going to set up uh, conference calls so they can be involved in our SART meetings and be part of what's going on. Yes, uh, and also uh, it's important that uh, you know schools and, like you said, Fulton Montgomery, they all have the information. Uh, how is that information got? Uh, what's the best way to get that information to students uh, on campus and in the community? Is it, should they come in? Is there information they can pick up, or the, is the website the best way? The website is an excellent way to get information, but we also do a lot of tabling events okay. and bring information out to people. Uh, when Fulton Montgomery Community College has speakers come in, we're always invited to set up a table with information. And um, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, so we always do something big on the campus. We've done some mock rape trials, and um, this year we, we need to plan another event. And, you know, the events change, too. It has yeah. to change with times. So we did the mock rape trial and said, ah, I've got to do something more with this. And uh, do you find that uh, on-campus students are, are taking the information, attending these events? Yes, uh, very well attended <clears throat> events. Um, there was a, a speaker who, who came, um, this woman wrote a book. Her name is Journey's Eve and it was called Intended Harm. And uh, when she was 17, she was riding her bicycle on a country road, got hit by a truck, was kidnapped. Uh, sexually assaulted, got away from the perpetrator who had planned to kill her, and wrote a, the book about her journey. She came to the campus to speak, and there wasn't even room for people to stand. It was very moving. Yeah. And how she has recovered um, in her life and everything she's done, and she's there to help other people now, too. But the college holds events like that and has people come in and speak. Yeah, well, it, it's great to see that you're involved with the community, that you're uh, having these tables, having this information out there. Uh, and like we said, awareness is, is, is important uh, so that people know and they, they can identify uh, when there's problems. Yeah, but as I said too, people don't, people don't want to think about sexual assault. 
Yeah. And, and it does happen, and it's such a trauma, such a shock when it does happen to people. And, and as you said, people can call even if it's not a crisis yet. They can give a sure. call and get uh, the information. People have questions. Um, one of the programs that I like to do for parents is recognizing assault and teaching your children to talk with us about assault. And someone may call and say, you know, I, I've seen some different behaviors in my child and I'm not sure if I should worry or what I should do with this. And there are some red flags for abuse and for assault. And it's nice sometimes just to be able to talk with someone or steer them somewhere so they can get help. And it, it's good that you're concerned in recognizing when something is different with your child. And it could just be a change in a teacher, or a change in their routine, or there could be something that's happening in their lives. And that, uh, that hotline again, 1-866-307-4086. Uh, uh, 24 hours a day, uh, you can call. Again, even if it's uh, not a crisis yet, you can call just to get, get the information, have somebody sure. to talk to. Sure. And the website, www.plannedparenthood.org slash PPMH, uh, and more information on everything we've talked about here and more as well. And as always, they can stop in uh, to uh, any one of the offices uh, to uh, talk to someone face-to-face -face as well. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing all this information with the community. Oh, you're welcome. I want to thank you for being on the show. I know, uh, as you said, these are difficult things to talk about sometimes, but it's nice to know that someone is there uh, if, uh, if someone needs to talk to somebody. And people do recover. Yes, and, and the, the, the awareness and the support is very mm -hmm. important, it's, mm -hmm. and it's great to hear about all the work that you're doing in our communities. Um, we, uh, if there's any other updates or anything, uh, we, we can look for those on the website. I want to thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you. And thank you for joining us here on Assembly Update. Join us again where we'll be talking more about things going on in your community and important services uh, like what we just heard with Veronica Parks. Thank you.